Why is it that reportings of domestic abuse tend to rise in the run-up to Christmas and New Year? Well, we think that, that actually the crime itself increases uh, at Christmas. So there's always a campaign trying to refresh people's memory that domestic abuse is a hazard. We don't really know why it increases at, the at this time of year, but it seems to do. It's possible that um, it's a very, you know, it's a very pressured time financially, and those tensions might make for quarrels in the family, or just that people are together for a longer period than usual. So any underlying tensions have a chance of surfacing. And of course, there's lots of alcohol around at Christmas, which can contribute to making tempers fray and so on. What is Northumbria Police's domestic abuse campaign? Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, this is our this year's campaign and it is intended I think to do two things. It's firstly to remind people that there is abuse. It's also to prompt them to understand that domestic abuse is not necessarily about a black eye and a drunken row, that what it's more about is keeping somebody in the perpetrator's power and control so that when you see a relationship actually maybe you need to look at what's going on underneath the surface that's what it's saying and it's highly relevant now because there is about to come into force a criminal offence of domestic abuse which is called coercive control and it's about uh, how a, a domestic abuse really works which is that the person is undermined so they're told they're ugly they're hopeless they're a terrible cook the kids don't like them they've gone to pot, they're lucky to have the perpetrator, they're not allowed to go out and see their friends, they're not encouraged to see any member of their family, they are told to do what he wants them to do, and because this is the person that you are, are living with, you know, you loved and thought you loved him, of course you tend to think he must be right and it's your fault, so it gets a big psychological grip over people, and makes it very hard from them to escape from this kind of power, even though they're miserable and they're very undermined by it. And often there is violence and there's definitely almost always sexual abuse. If you want to undermine somebody you're living with, sex is the way to do it too. So really what we're saying is try to understand if you see any of your friends, any of your acquaintances who start to behave in a different way, you know, who look a bit worried or oppressed or de depressed or won't come out with you anymore or don't talk to you anymore or are late for work regularly don't seem to be concentrated anything that's a little bit different of course it could be for a lot of reasons but just keep your eye on the possibility that this is happening because they won't be able to help themselves very readily they'll need you to speak to them and do intervene um, gently and, and appropriately but domestic abuse gets worse and worse and worse and harder and harder to get out of. And also it has a long-term impact on somebody's well-being if you're being undermined like that on and on and on. And so intervene quickly. Mm. And just to touch up on it, what sort of things should see victims look out for to tell if they are being abused? Because it's easy to kind of turn a blind eye or they might think that something's minimal and it's not worth um, seeking help for? Well, for victims themselves, that's a really interesting point that you've put your finger on there because the difficulty is that, that people do wonder if it's in their own head mm -hmm. that what is going on is going on. So what I guess you need to do is to step back and try to remember what relationships you've had before have been like and what maybe this relationship was like at the beginning and then measure what's happening to you now um, against that the other thing you can do is to talk to a friend and just describe what's happening and see what they make of it that is i think something you can do confidentially we've talked quite recently to a person whose work brought her in touch with other people who were suffering from this and it's only because that happened that she realized what was happening to her so victims uh, should not just think that it's all in their own head they should try and get some outside measure of whether it is or not and overwhelmingly people who see somebody behaving in a different way should try and intervene gently and privately because it will be difficult for that person to speak to you so how could victims find help if they are being abused they can 
telephone the helpline which is on all our posters uh, and they will get private support from experts who've dealt with this often for many many years and understand how it works and understand how it can convince people that it's not real as well so ring this helpline is really the message okay and white ribbon do this last week so is that something that you're going to try and endorse and push every year to become bigger white ribbon day is great and it's mm -hmm. big and it needs to get bigger we supported it very strongly i did two or three speeches on that day about white ribbon day because of course 85 percent of domestic abuse like this is by men on women and white ribbon day targets men to say to them first of all don't do it but of course many 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 men would not dream of behaving in this way but it is to say to them you you know if somebody you know a man is behaving like this speak to them as well it is no part of masculinity to control somebody in this fashion on the contrary it's bullying and is not the way ordinary proper men want to be uh, we will never solve domestic abuse unless we stop men behaving like that and the best way of doing that is because people who are their peers understand it and show that it's completely unacceptable to them.